Welcome. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through uh, chapter three and some of the concepts with chapter three. So this is for uh, the uh, work with vendors chapter. So to begin with, what we need to, need to do is we need to uh, open up our QuickBooks and we need to toggle to make sure we're on the pro version. So toggle to another version right here. Make sure we're on QuickBooks Pro. Okay, now, we're, now that we're toggled and then we've uh, opened up, uh, have QuickBooks Pro up here at the top, we wanna go ahead and open up uh, the assignment for develop your skills. It's not really not an assignment you turn into grade. Actually, that's something I've changed with the course. So it's important to note that you no longer need to do the reinforce your skills uh, assignments and submit them for grade. So the develop your skills are the ones that are through the chapter. Reinforce your skills are the first ones at the very end and those you don't have to do for grading. So develop your skills are not going to be graded. That's for your own use. Reinforce your skills. I still encourage you to do them but don't submit them for grading. Uh, the apply your skills is what's going to be submitted for grading and the extend your skills. That'll also be submitted for grading. The extend your skills usually has a file that's in uh, the file area that you downloaded right at the beginning of the course. Um, for usually a Word document, but we'll get to that later. So first off, we're going to go in and go in here and we're going to find our develop your skills assignment. So I have it shared on one of my uh, saved on one of my shared drives here. So QB19, it's gonna be under the uh, this right here, the portable skills for chapter three, and it's DYS chapter three portable. So we also have separate, you can see in here, we have separate files for all of the applier skills that you're gonna submit, as well as the uh, extend your skills that you'll submit that as well once you're done. Apply your skills are submitted through, you're going to use the Excel file to submit that and it tells you how to prep, uh, pull the report and uh, export an Excel file that will be graded. Those will be quick graded ones. Only the quick graded ones are you going to do the uh, for the apply your skills. Let me show you what those look like really quick here at the back of the book. So if there's a quick grade apply your skills, for example 3-1 it's going to have this little orange box here that says QG for quick grade. So those are the ones that you uh, submit. If there's any apply your skills that don't have this little quick grade on them, you don't have to submit them. And those, those are also uh, all the assignments that are in uh, the Canvas gradebook uh, or the Canvas syllabus, all the Canvas stuff. You, the ones that are in there are the ones you have to submit. So if it's not in there, uh, then you're not going to have to submit it. Okay. So just so just to note, I've changed up what you need to submit. I did that to hopefully streamline and make it easier for you to submit things, understand what's going to be graded. There was a big uh, problem submitting some of the reinforcer skills, and we're not going to worry about that. So just submit the applier skills with the QG or quick grade on them and the uh, extend your skills. The extend your skills, I will grade manually still. The apply your uh, skills with the quick grade, those are graded automatically and you can see your grade quickly and be able to understand maybe what you did wrong and what you can change uh, to, do, to go through that. Okay, so now we're gonna open up our, our develop your skills for chapter three, we're gonna go ahead and save. For this one, we're gonna save the working file. So this is saving a QBW file, which is a working file, and it says to save it as 
all that and it's gonna have uh, average guys design okay you can save that wherever you want I'm gonna throw it out here on my desktop and save it All right, so we are going here with chapter three. So we can go ahead and put our password in here. And what I'm gonna show you really quick is basically where, to, where, we're, where we work with vendors, uh, how we're going to set up our uh, vendor, add new vendors, how we're gonna delete vendors, and then we'll talk about bills after that, so. All right, so now we're up and going. So this is the home page, right? This is QuickBooks with our file open. Vendors is the section on the top of the home page. So if we click right here into the blue, then it's gonna open up our vendor center and we can see our different vendors, right? So vendors are the people that we buy our supplies from. They're the people that we buy maybe some things that we resell. They're the people that we buy, uh, for example, uh, they're the, our utility companies, they're the power company, they're the gas company, right? The cable, the telephone company. All of these things so vendors are basically people we buy stuff from for our business so our business can run and so our business can hopefully have everything we need to to then turn around and make money from customers so as we go in here what we're gonna do is we're gonna add new vendor right up here on the top left of the vendor center so this is where our new vendor screen is set up right so we're able to add a new vendor name in there for example, um, well, we're gonna go ahead and add, one of the vendors that we use here is gonna be uh, GJB Wireless, comma, Inc. Okay, and we're gonna try to keep it as much as possible like the, um, like it is in the book, right? And so when we submit things with apply your skills quick grading, sometimes if we spell it wrong or we have something wrong, then it's gonna mark it wrong for us. So, so we pay attention to spelling, right? So we have our vendor name here that we put in. It's not gonna necessarily auto-populate into the company, so we can go ahead and select it, do Control C, which is copy, and then come down here and Control V is paste. And so that's something we can do. And so we can put our uh, contact name. So this is the uh, main contact for the company. Whoops. Uh, there we go. There we go. Job title, sales rep. Business sales rep. Here we go. Our main phone. So, uh, one thing to note is when we put the phone number in, if uh, the automatic grading that grades us is going to look at spaces, so make sure you space after things that need spaces. And, um, and make sure that if you don't spell the vendor name correctly, it's not gonna attach the phone number. So sometimes just by fixing the vendor name, it'll fix the phone number. Other times it won't, right? So one of the important things too is you can still generate Excel files out of QuickBooks uh, without opening the reports, right? So the apply your skills are using reports. You gotta pull the report and then generate the Excel file out of the report for the apply your skills. You can't just pull it out of the main uh, window. 
uh, there, even though there's an option to do that, right? Okay, so here's our here's our uh, address. There we go, and we can go ahead and copy that over. Change it up if we need to, or just say okay, and it'll copy over. Uh, we're gonna go into payment settings here. And so on our payment settings, we can enter in a lot of stuff here. So this is where we enter in our account name. Uh, this, our account number, this is our account number with them. So in their records or in their system, they have a, our account number, right? And so this is our account number that we have with them. Sometimes this is things that we need, right? When we're when we're working with them, they want to know well, what's your account number so that they can look us up in their records, right? Payment terms. This is their payment terms for us. They set this, and so we just need to put it in and understand that. Uh, we're going to go down here to additional info and do service providers as the type and now uh, G uh, J B wireless will show up on our vendor list there there it is right there okay so um, for for deleting vendors right so we can go into any specific vendor for example graphic supply shop right was one that we wanted to go in here and edit we can go into their record by just double clicking and their information comes up and we can go ahead and edit them right there right and once we're done editing them we can click OK we can delete a vendor right here so we're going to choose the paper palace uh, one important note is if there is any transactions or stuff included with that vendor right we can see there's no transactions down here on the right side bottom right if there's any transactions then you don't want to delete the vendor. You want to inactivate them possibly, but you don't want to delete them. That's your accounting records uh, that you're going to be having to delete and it'll mess everything up. So don't delete vendors with um, detail transactions. But the paper uh, palace does not have uh, anything on there for, um, for transaction wise, right? So we can go up here to the top menu and do edit, delete vendor right there. You can also use control D, here is our shortcut, and that will delete the vendor out. It, it's just confirming because it's a major thing to delete a vendor if you don't want to, right? Because you gotta put all the information back in. So that, it, that vendor's gone. Okay, so that's the vendors. So these are our people that we uh, need to pay bills to, right? So they're people we buy stuff, from sometimes we do it on credit not with cash so they're gonna bill us later so when we when they bill us let's go ahead and close this we're gonna enter bills here we can see right here with this little icon that's the enter bills and that's where we can enter the bills in okay so for entering bills let's go ahead and do this here really quick so we're gonna click that and then our uh, bill section will open up and we will be able to enter in the bills. so this is a vendor we're going to choose so we can either choose existing vendors or if we want to from the drop down list we can add a new and do a quick add kind of like we did with the customers last time you can, you can quick add from just from this bill window so if you're going through your bills entering your bills and it pulls up a bill from somebody you know is le legitimate but you don't have them as a vendor, you can go ahead and put them in quickly by clicking add new and then do quick add uh, by filling out the information for them. Okay, but here's our GJB wireless. And so we're gonna go ahead and put the information in from them. Um, as we put this in, we're gonna change the date. So that's something um, that comes up with today's date for me. So I'm gonna change the date. Okay. 
So it's just making sure I understand that I'm changing the date on there. Uh, my, our reference number, we're actually referencing an invoice that they sent us, right? So when we send our customers invoices, we were wanting them to pay us. When our vendors send us invoices, that's a bill to us that we have to pay, right? So we call it a bill on our side when our uh, vendors send us their invoice, right? And so our invoices to other uh, to, uh, go to our customers for them to pay us. So we got our invoice number here and date. Okay, so that's that references the invoice that we're paying here or that we need to pay. We haven't paid. This is not a payment, right? Even though this looks like a check, this is not a payment. This is entering our payables, right? So this is entering a liability that when we know we owe somebody and we get an invoice, we know we owe them. We haven't paid yet necessarily, but we are going to enter in that amount. And so that's this is our amount due is 6128 and um Here's our memo as well. So our memo is going to be down here on the bottom. So we're going to put the name and we're going to put the invoice down on the memo. So I'm copy and pasting these things down to the bottom here um, as part of my memo. A lot of other boxes we're not going to use exactly yet, right? Like discount dates and different things. We're not going to do that at this point the bill day the bill due automatically enters because we put the payment terms in so it's it's net 30 so it's going to go ahead and go out 30 days and say that's when the bill is due for us okay so if we're entering this date this may not be today's date this may be a, the date we received it uh, a couple days ago and now we're just getting into entering the bills we need to enter it when we receive it the date of the invoice because that's the 30-day begin mark, right? So, or, when, or whenever their payment terms are, okay? So now, now we're gonna go down here and we're gonna look at the bottom. So this is expenses. These are specific expenses that we can put in with account numbers. So we're gonna go ahead and put in our account numbers here. Um, I'm gonna type in CO and we see that all the different accounts that start in CO are gonna pop up for us. One we want is going to be this top one right here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and make this screen a little bigger. We can scooch this over if we want to see that, right? So there it is. And so that's that's what we have in there. Um, we can go ahead and create or put the memo as well from here down to here if we want to. Um, but that's entering our bills. Okay. Uh, the items tab on this, this is for sp specific items that we have on our item lists, right? So if we're buying, for example, from a vendor something to resell or something that's part of an, a normal item that we keep in stock, then that's going to be in the item list and that's going to be preloaded for us to hurry up and do. The expenses are going to be manual, typically manual entry uh, items that we're going to put in. Um, and so we can do that uh, using the expenses, right? So they're not preloaded items that we're buying. They're typically services or some other things, right, that we can put in there. So we can set default accounts for vendors. So as we go in here, so we're going to go in here. Here's our history. Okay, so now we're gonna really quick we're gonna do default accounts for vendors so we click this button over here to the right and it opens up our edit uh, vendor window and then we're gonna go to account settings in here and under the account settings we can go ahead and then choose accounts that we want to preload as accounts that come up when we open the vendor up in the billing window and put the vendor in then these accounts automatically come up so if we know that the CJB wireless is always going to have computer and expense expenses with this account we can go ahead and put them in there and preload it that way we have less data entry in the future right so if we do it once like this we don't have to do it every month into the future um, 
and so that's going to be there um, and we're also going to change let's go ahead and change the terms um, to a net 15 on here and then we're going to do uh, okay and then we're going to see how it changes the bill due date right there since we changed that and that's not a month out 30 days out now it's just 15 days out so we're going to go ahead and do uh, save and new and in this case we're going to go ahead and uh, flip over so we're going to go to something else here real quick I want to cover some some of the basis anyways for you so you kind of know what we're doing here as we go through um, so uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to go in here so let's go ahead and close our uh, bill window here and then we're going to go into pay bills right so we entered the bills in as we get them right as we know what they are so we go ahead and enter all the information then we can go over here and, and we can click on pay bills okay and so then uh, it, it queues up all of the bills that we have that are waiting to be paid so we can click on uh, a specific bill right here and it will queue, a, queue it up for us to to be paid so amount to pay you can kind of see as we click on and off right it's going to change the numbers for us it's going to include it in there um, and we can know what account we're going to pay it out of. If we have more than one checking account, right? Or here we have a checking and a savings. If we're going to pay it out of a certain account, we can change this. Um, and then we also have, so we know that account, and we can click to be printed. Um, to be printed right there, right? Versus a signed check number. So we're going to go ahead and click to be printed and we can also change the check date so this will be the payment date or the date on the check that's going to come out okay so that changes that so then it queues up for us what we're paying here right and so as we go in here there it gives us these are queued up now that we're paying them and then we can go in here and click uh, uh, print checks and then it'll queue up the checks for us here uh, there's always already some queued up as well and then we can go ahead and we can see the check dates that are that are queued up to print uh, so ideally your check dates are in order they're an internal control um, some checks right that you can get that are already pre-printed with the check numbers on them which is also an internal control that way nobody can swipe a check a copy of a check paper and uh, create a check on their own outside of your system right so those are good the checks are good especially if they're pre-numbered and all that the check paper you need to keep that in a locked place somewhere where nobody else can get to it right because that's important information so so this will bring up uh, our check our check queue in here and we can go ahead and and uh, queue it up depending on what check type you have or style we can do that um, there's also let's see here also have an option when we go in here to let me make sure I get this straight here to be printed and then I'm going to go to uh, click pay selected bills and then click pay more bills so there I'm able to uh, see I check the assigned check number so I can 
uh, print a check um, not in order or right or if I'm gonna assign the check number that's important sometimes you may need to do that and so so you can do that as well and then um, once you queue that up, then you can go ahead and print your checks through there. So this is when, when you print those checks, and then you're able to turn your payable, right? Uh, you, your payable is increases as we enter bills, right? Because we haven't paid them yet. Once we print the checks, the payable is reduced and our cash is reduced, right? So we've, we're doing that and then we're able to uh, send the checks out and our vendors will be happy with us. Okay, so that's super important as well to make sure that um, our vendors are happy with us. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back here real quick. Uh, so we're not gonna record those. Um, so the other option that we have for our checks is, is down here in the banking area. So this is where we write checks, okay? So this is as if this is done without entering bills, right? So we don't have to, on, in this case, we're not going to enter bills first and then pay bills, right? That'll automatically pay checks, do the checks for us. This is a manual entry for a, a check. So if we didn't get a bill, we wanna go ahead and enter it in just one fail swoop and not batch up the checks and run them, then we come right in here and we can write a check, uh, create a check and queue it up right from the get-go. So that's gonna be um, something that we can do. Uh, and it wants to make sure we have this little print later uh, thing checked so it's, so it's able to kind of queue it up. So we can create several of these in a batch and then print them as we go through. Again, this does not create a payable. This is, this is uh, direct expensing, right? We're gonna expense it correct directly as we go. So um, this is also a way if we have a handwritten checks, right? That we write in a checkbook, we can come and put those transactions that we did in to our uh, records by queuing up and, and creating the checks in here like this and then um, going ahead and uh, and then running it through the system and, and uh, basically posting the checks, right? Saving the checks and posting them or printing the checks and not really sending out a copy of the check. Basically the print will post them um, once we queue up the checks in this fashion. Okay, so that's important to note. Important to note. And so one, it's also important to queue up and kind of figure out how to void checks, right? So one of the things that we can do is we can go back in here and find checks that, that were created and go and void them as well. So we'll walk, uh, so that's something to look at as well because uh, you might need to do that as well because we don't always enter in the checks and all the stuff uh, correct the first time. So, so we wanna be able to go through and do that. All right, and when we go and delete it, we have the option to void it or just delete the check. So voiding it will actually, uh, right, changes the check amounts to zero and stamps void, leaves the record in there, right? Deleting the check is different. It deletes the transaction altogether. Okay, so those are two different things. Typically voiding a check is gonna be the correct thing, especially if you've already posted it and it's been paid, if it has paid on it, you're gonna be able to void it. If you haven't actually paid the check yet, then you can go ahead and delete it out. No harm, no foul, right? If, if you haven't actually um, recorded and paid the check out already. So anyways, that, that's a couple of nuances in there. Hopefully this video will help you as you get into this chapter and we will talk to you later. Thanks, bye.